Hello friends, welcome. I'm your friend, your host Roy. Welcome to Rising Paul. Today's presentation is about series 1 where we are discussing real numbers and welcome to this episode number 19. Friends, today we are talking about rational numbers and specifically terminating decimal numbers. Now last few presentations have been on irrational numbers but we are going to shift our focus today on rational numbers and specifically terminating decimal expanding rational numbers. So quick recap, what is a rational number? We have seen in our last class, series 1, in great amount of detail. Rational number is nothing but any number that can be expressed in the form p by q, where both p, q are integers, integers, and the value of q, the denominator, should not be equal to 0. Some examples are written out here, 2 by 3, 5 by 8, minus 3 by 5, minus 32 by 41, etc., etc. So essentially, I can write any numerator and I can write any denominator. They are all examples of rational number, right? These are all examples of rational number. Now, we also know that because you have a ratio, numerator divided by denominator, that you can actually do the process of long division. Now, what happens if you actually do the process of long division? We have also learnt in our last class that the decimal expansion of rational number is always one of the two things. Either we can have a terminating decimal number expansion or we can have a non-terminating but repeating decimal expansion. These are only two possible outcomes of a rational number in a decimal form. So, I can have either something like 2.5, this is a this is a rational number or I can have 1.333 where the 3 is continuously recurring. This is a rational number and, and how I can convert this, prove that this can be expressed in the form P by Q and this can be expressed in the form P by Q, these are things that we have seen in our last uh, class in series 1 web source and I am going to uh, include some links down below underneath this video. So, also which is equally important is to note that whenever a decimal expansion of a number is terminating or non-terminating but repeating, that number is a rational number. So, friends, in this particular, in this particular video, we are going to be really uh, keeping our focus on rational numbers for terminating decimal numbers. So, why don't we write some rational numbers? Let us say we write, uh, I am randomly going to write some rational numbers, 1.25, say 0.8 and let us say 1.735. Uh, why don't we just, you know, yeah, I think this is fine. So, we are randomly writing some numbers or can make it like probably uh, you know, why don't we just probably make it uh, 21. I am just randomly writing out some rational numbers in here. And what we are going to do is, th each of these rational, each of these decimal numbers are actually terminating decimal numbers, right? Note that I did not put the bar on top of any or one of them. So, they are all terminating decimal numbers. What we will like to do now, we will like to express them in the form P by Q. So, the first step is, for this one, we can write this as 1.25. Actually, we are trying to get the point out, right? So, 125 divided by 100. Why 100? Why two zeros? Because after the decimal, there are two digits. So, that is why two zeros. Or I can write this as, now I want to actually find out the prime factors for both numerator and denominator. So, this is nothing but 5 times 5 times 5. If you do the prime factor, you will see that. And this is nothing but 2 to the power 2 times 5 times 5. In other words, if you if you further, you know, uh, process that, cancel out the common factors. So, you will have 5 divided by 2 to the power 2. Now, let us do for this one. So, 0 0.8 can be written as 8 by 10. 8 can be written as 2 times 4 and 10 can be written as 2 times 5 and here 2, 2 will get cancelled. 
So, 4 will have 2 square divided by 5. Now, let's try to expand this. So, here if you expand this, oh, I should have taken a small number. This will take a while to actually prime factorize the numerator. But let's go ahead and let's give it, an, give it a shot. So, 2, 1, 7, 3, 5 divided by, I will have three zeros here because I have, after the decimal, I have three digits. So, there are three zeros. Now, we have to actually find out the prime factorization for this. So, let's try to see if we have enough space here. I'm going to use the, probably the table method of trying to do this. 2, 1, 7, 3, 5. So, this ends with 5. So, we can actually have, this will be divisible by 5. From the divisibility rule, we know if the last digit is a 5, then it can be divided by 5. So, 5, 4 is 20, 1, 7, 3 is 15, 2, 3, 4 is 20, 3, 20 and 3, 5, 7 is 35. So, 5 times 4, 3, 4, 7 actually is this. Now, is this number divisible by, this is an odd number. So, this cannot be div divided by 2 or 4 or 6 or 8. How about 3? Can we divide this by 3? 4 plus 3 uh, divisibility test uh, for 3 is like 4 plus 3, 7 plus 4 is 11 plus 7, 18. Okay, we got lucky. So, if we divide this by 3, what do we have? We have 3 1s are 3, 1 3, 3 4s are 12, 1 4, 3 4s are 12 again, and 2 7, 3 9s are 27. So, now can we divide this by 3 again? Let us just see. So, 4 plus 4, 8 plus 1, 9, and 9. Yeah, so this can be divided by 3 again. And yeah, this is, we're just doing a just plain old prime factorization for this number right now. And you will see why we're doing that in a moment. So now 3, 4 is a 12, 2, 4, 3, 8 is a 24, and 3, 3 is a 9. What about this number? Now, can we divide this number by 3? 12 plus, wow, this, we can also divide this by 3. So 3, 1 is a 3, 1, 8, 3, 6 is a 18, and 1. So we have now 161, right? I think this is a perfect square. I think, um, is it 19? I think I think it's probably 19 times 19 is 161, if I'm not wrong. But anyhow, let's just go ahead and write this for what we have got so far. So 5 times 3 times 3 times 3. So I have got 5 times 3. How many 3s? There are 3 3s. Three Multiply by 161 divided by, in the denominator I have, uh, if you break this down, you will have 2 to the power 3 times 5 to the power 3. Why? Because 10 is nothing but 2 to the power, 2 times 5, right? And I have three zeros, so if it is 10 cube, it will be this, and if you open it up, 2 to the power 3, 5 to the power 3. So, then what will happen is, if you take out one of the fives, so you will end up having in the numerator 3 to the power 3 times 1, 6, 1 divided by 2 to the power 3 times 5 to the power 2. So, I think you will ask why we are doing all of this and what is really the purpose. What we want to show you is that just focus on the denominator in each case. Here you have 2 to the power something, here you have 5 to the power something, and here you have both 2 and 5 to the power something. So, what is very important to recognize is that whenever we have a decimal, terminating decimal expansion, and we have totally randomly picked up these numbers from our imagination, the when we express them in p by q form in as a rational number the q which is the denominator when you when you actually write you find out the prime factorization of the q and you you cancel out all the common factors what you are left with is that this q has either only 2 or only 5 or 
2 and 5 as only prime factors. Yes, they can be raised to different powers. But the prime factors is always 2 or 5 or both 2 and 5 raised to some power. I think before we try to generalize it, maybe we'll try to take a look at one other example. So let's see, um, let's write something like probably, how about we write as um, 2, 7, 9 or uh, yeah, 2, 7 point 8. Maybe, you know, I'm just thinking maybe like 8, 2. I'm just randomly trying to put, you know, before we ascertain for sure, I'm just writing another decimal number from my imagination and trying to figure out. This will again take some time because, you know, we picked a big number. So we have to do the prime factorization. So anyhow, let's just do that. Let's see if we can quickly finish this. So 2, 7, 9, 8, 2 divided by there are two decimal places. So 100 prime factorization of this number is 2, 7, 9, 8, 2. So let's do this. So this can be divided by 2. So 2 1s are 2, 2 3s are 6, 1 9 19, 2 9s are 18, 1 2 18 and then 1. Now is this number divisible by 3 because the odd number. So 3 1s are 3. Oh, the 3 plus 1 we have to add all these numbers. So 1 plus 3 4 plus 9 plus 1 10. So 4 plus 10 14 plus 9 is 23 which is not divisible by 3. So this may be divisible by 7 or this may be divisible by 9 or some other number but we don't know at this point. So you know what we'll do we will write this as 2 times this big number right 1 3 1 3 9 9 1 divided by in the denominator we have 2 to the power 2 times 5 to the power 2 right because 100 is nothing but 10 times 10 and 10 is nothing but you know 2 times 5 so 2 to the power 2 5 to the power 2 so you have one common factor here 2 so 1 2 will cancel out so you will have in this case there is this numerator divided by 2 times 5 to the power 2. Now because this number numerated is actually an odd number so definitely this cannot be divided by 2 right so my 2 factor in denominator will stay also this number does not end with 5 or 0. So this number whatever this number is it cannot have 5 as a factor. So, in the denominator, I will have 5 squared. So, again, friends, you saw that we have taken a random decimal number, which is definitely terminating. And what we see is that the denominator, the P by Q form, this Q, after you have taken out all the common factors, the denominator is always of this form 2 times Five. These are the only two factors and these are raised to the power x and y. They have different, they have different values, right? But sometimes you can get only 2 and no 5. In that case, the value of y is 0. So, there are no 5, only 2. And then sometimes if you put x equal to 0, there are no two factors, only 5. And sometimes in this case, you have some, val some value for x and some value for y. So, it means that whenever we have a terminating decimal, you will notice even though friends, we have taken only four examples, I would strongly encourage you to actually take any number of decimal numbers which are terminating from your imagination and do this exact process. That is first prime, find out prime factorization of the numerator, find out prime factorization of the denominator, then cancel out all the common factors. What you will end up seeing is that always the denominator Q is going to be of this form. It will never have any other prime number except 2 or 5 or both raised to some power where these values x and y could be 0 or any positive number. So friends, this is what we will do. So what we do is that we officially write this. This is actually a very important theorem. 
we write this as let x be any rational number with terminating decimal expansion. Then x can be expressed in the form of p by q where both p, q are co-prime. Co-prime meaning after you have expressed p by q form, there are no more common factors between the numerator and denominator. Then if you do the prime factorization of q, this prime factorization of q is always of this form 2 to the power something times 5 to the power something where this something are non-negative integers. It is important to understand that this 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n. Now non-negative meaning you can have 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way till infinity. Right? The values for m and n can be any of these. So if you have 0 as value, 5 is 0, then 5 zeros are 1. That means there are no 5 factors, only 2 factors. Similarly, if m is 0, then you will have 2 to the power 0, which will become 1. In that case, the q will be only having factors of 5. Now, this is very important that, friends, if you have a terminating decimal number, that means that terminating decimal number is a rational number where the denominator can be expressed in this form.